By the late 20th century, a new breed of money managers is emerging. Paul Tudor Jones is one of the most profitable traders ever, who through sheer wealth power and calculated risk-taking, turned a small-time hedge fund into an empire. Paul Tudor Jones II was born into a wealthy family in Memphis, Tennessee. His father was a lawyer who also ran the family's publishing business. Jones went to the University of Virginia, where he was a welterweight boxing champion. He was a tough guy, often beating the hell out of his opponent. I think that competitiveness, that desire to win, very much defined his character. Even though his family was rich, Paul Tudor Jones still had to work to pay for his tuition as a writer for his family's newspaper. The single most important thing you need to learn for any job in business is how to communicate, how to write a memo, how to talk, how to think. The easiest way to learn how to do that is to take Journalism 101, newspaper writing. During college, Paul Tudor Jones developed a liking for competitive mind games. I played a whole bunch of games, uh, chess, bad game when I was older. When I was in college, I was the booking our fraternity. So I had, by the time I uh, graduated from college, I already had probably at least a master's in probabilistic theory. Jones soon realizes that there is no better game than a game of the financial market. My senior year, uh, the guy that I inherited the book from said to me, oh man, um, you gotta try this soybean futures. Uh, I'm back and we're hedging up they had a huge plantation at the time in Arkansas. We're hedging up our soybean crop, and this, this just makes, this makes football gambling just pale in comparison. In 1976, after earning a bachelor's degree in economics, Paul Tudor Jones landed a job at the New York Cottons Exchange. At that time, commodities trading was really the Wild West, much like cryptocurrencies today. Jones started as a float clerk, studying the market to figure out what makes it tick. He very quickly figures out that the market is not some abstract concept. It's just a group of people standing there trying to outsmart each other. To win this game, all Jones has to do is to understand the behavior of the traders around him. Like a biologist studying a group of animals, Jones discovers that there are some patterns of behavior that can be exploited. Jones sees his future. He can outsmart the market and become rich in the process. However, before Jones can take on his great conquest, he was fired from his job. And I read a story on a guy named Richard Dennis, who was the biggest local uh, at the Board of Trade, and then he used to say that he did his best trading when he was hung over because there was no emotion. And I thought, hmm, this is starting to get close to what I'm culturally pretty good at. Jones was indeed a drinker and a party animal. After a wild night in New Orleans, he fell asleep at his desk. He was fired immediately by his boss. Paul Tudor Jones' love for the party life will come back and haunt him in the future. But for now, he learns to separate that from his day-to-day -day work. Paul Tudor Jones soon landed a job as a commodities broker for E.F. Hutton, buying and selling contracts on behalf of his clients. Jones excelled at this job. In two short years, he made over $1 million from commissions. For the next four years, Paul Tudor Jones learned the ins and outs of the futures market. Futures are just contracts that set specific price for a commodity at a future date. Of course, this contract itself has value, which is traded in an exchange. But there are markets for some of the wildest things. And the reason that you have these markets is because when two mutually consenting adults have opposite views and they want to express them, then you want to be able to let them do that and allow them to basically either hedge their risks or take on risks that they're able to do. Although Paul Tudor Jones makes lucrative commissions by being a broker, he also started making money by trading his own account. And after a while I realized I could do so much better if I 
just traded for myself because the commissions back then were it was nine dollars a contract and i realized i could go trade for myself and clear i think even then clearing was still 30 or 40 cents a contract and just do and i and i started doing that for myself uh, and i did really really so you were really, successful from the start pretty much but the life on the trading floor is taking a toll on paul tudor jones for traders, losing voice is a common occupational hazard, which Paul Tudor Jones is trying to avoid. 30 on two. 30 on two. By 1983, Paul Tudor Jones started his own firm, the Tudor Investment Corporation. Although Jones has made millions for himself as a floor trader, he understands the power of leverage by trading other people's money, and he knows just the people to ask for it. Paul Tudor Jones' cousin was the CEO of the world's largest cotton merchant. He became Jones' first client. I think a lot of the success of these hedge fund billionaires has to do with their network. And finance, as an industry in particular, tends to emphasize more on networking than just skills. With enough money at hand, Paul Tudor Jones is not free to trade all kinds of assets. During the next few years, he was generating double and triple digit returns with only one losing month. But the true testament of a trader's ability only comes during the bear market. And Jones is about to come face to face with the biggest bear since the Great Depression. When Ronald Reagan took over the presidency, American economy boomed. However, by the late 80s, the growth had slowed while inflation was still high. The strong dollar was putting pressure on exports. The future earnings are going downhill, but the stocks are unaffected. All of this is a recipe for a financial disaster. While his peers are unaware of the impending doom, Paul Tudor Jones is preparing for the worst case scenario. Yes, there will be some type of a decline without a question in the next 10 to 20 months, and it will be uh, earth shaking, it will be saber rattling, and it'll have Wall Street in a tizzy, and it will create headlines that will be, uh, that will dwarf anything that's happened at this point in time. But a market boom can last longer than expected, and Paul Tudor Jones is attempting the impossible. Market timing. Paul Tudor Jones hired an economist, Peter Borish, who predicted that a crash will happen sometime around the spring of 1988. But on that Friday, Paul Tudor Jones noticed that S&P 500 has gone down a little. After years of observing the market behavior, he was convinced that this is the moment. Once the market starts to fall, then it is unstoppable. Expecting worse decline to come on Monday, Jones shorted some S&P 500 futures. In this situation, the risk and reward payoff are asymmetric. What I mean by that is that if Jones is wrong, his loss is small. But if he's right, his returns will be huge. Good evening. Today is Black Monday, the day the Dow dropped more than 500 points. The day the Dow dropped more than 22%. I knew for a fact that if and when it broke because uh, of the derivative structure, that the downside was going to be unlimited, literally unlimited, because uh, there were no limits on futures. While the bubble is actualizing, Jones finds more ways to profit from this crash. During a typical financial recession, Federal Reserve tends to pump cash into the system to provide more liquidity. Jones realizes that if the Fed indeed injects more cash into the economy, the bond market will soar. But if the Fed does nothing, the bond price will stay the same. This is another asymmetric bet. Of course, it doesn't know for sure that it will happen. But the upside is huge, while the downside is very limited. These two bets paid off. Paul Tudor Jones netted $80 million from his first trade, and another $100 million by betting that the Fed will print more money. While most traders on Wall Street were wiped out, Paul Tudor Jones gained 200% for that year. In finance, one of the best ways to make a name for yourself is make money during the bear market, winning while everyone else is losing. If Tudor's management was a small fund then, the black money's win has made Jones a sensation on Wall Street. Now everyone wants to invest with him. Paul Tudor Jones is now a force to be reckoned with, and he wants to enjoy his wealth. 
After every financial crisis, there is always anti-Wall Street sentiment. By the mid-1980s, Jones reportedly was developing a reputation for courting fashion models and partying long into the night. The Wall Street Journal ran a front-page article referring to Jones as a quattrone man in a profile covering his lifestyle. Moved to the U.S. in around 1986. I was modeling and came here to model. In 1988, Jones married Sonia Klein. Soon after, they moved into Greenwich, Connecticut. Just a year after Black Monday crash, Paul Tudor Jones saw another financial bubble on the brink of bursting. This time, it was the Japanese equities market. Post World War II, Japan saw unprecedented growth, becoming the second largest economy in just a few decades. By the 80s, economic growth had saturated, Japan no longer relies on exports for growth, and started stimulating the growth by printing more money. Japan, for a long time now, has had a situation where very much the stock market and the land market have been based on a um, credit type situation. People have land, they put the land in as collateral, buy stocks, they then put those stocks in as collateral to buy more land. Jones once again realized that this is not a sustainable situation. A crash must happen, but they decide not to act quickly because the market tends to experience rallies on the way down as more delusional traders refuse to accept the reality. I mean, the one thing that, that's, that I would say I've learned the past 40 years is these, you know, price patterns and, and price stories, it's, this, it's the same old story so often, just, just with different characters, different times, different plots. Then at the start of 1990, the Tokyo market fell nearly 4% in a matter of days. After that, the market has a few rallies, but fell 7% in February and 13% in March. Jones' timing proved excellent. Everything happened almost exactly like how he predicted. Tokyo's market fell steeply from July through early October. He shorted the Japanese equities market using index futures. That year, he returned 90% on his portfolio, largely from his Tokyo bet. Paul Tudor Jones is the ultimate defensive trader. He's like the Floyd Mayweather of finance. He's very strategic and very good at avoiding big losses. Always, first and foremost, uh, protecting your ass. And that's why most people lose money as individual investors or as traders because of the fact they're not focusing on losing money. They need to focus on the money that they have at risk. How much capital is at risk in any single investment they have? If everyone spent 90% of their time on that, rather than 90% of their time on pie-in-the-sky ideas about how much money they're going to make, then they'd be incredibly successful investors. What he means by that is that as a trader, you should always have insurance against the worst-case scenario. While rare events happen rarely, but when they do happen, they tend to be more catastrophic than you think. In the financial terms, it is called the tail risk, or the black swan event. Remote events happen less often, but when they happen, they command a much greater effect on the total properties. So the definition of fat tail is a small number of observations in, in a given data set would represent the bulk of statistical properties. Paul Tudor Jones has another secret weapon, systems thinking. Rather than looking at assets individually, he thinks about the flow of capital throughout the whole system. Like right now, I'm watching the currencies, I'm watching crude, I'm watching stocks and bonds. They're all interrelated. You know, the whole world is simply nothing but a big flow chart for capital. And if I start getting hurt uh, in, for instance, stocks or bonds, then I'm going to make a total portfolio adjustment just because of the fact I might not like the way the numbers are going over the course of the day. In the game of the financial market, Paul Tudor Jones plays it better than most. He's an embodiment of a true speculator, whose returns are so consistent, making every trader jealous. As his popularity grew, people are watching his every move, hoping to uncover the secret for his trading success. One of these people is the SEC. In 1994, Paul Tudor Jones paid a fine of $800,000 to settle allegations of violating the uptick rule, which prohibits the sale of a borrowed stock. 
while the stock is declining. The early 80s were the golden age for commodities trading. The market was new and full of opportunities. Paul Tudor Jones grew up with a passion for competitive games. He threw himself into the pit, becoming a multi-millionaire before age 30. After successfully predicting the black money crash, Paul Tudor Jones emerged as a super stock trader on Wall Street. But the world is getting more complicated and no one can win forever. In time, Jones will face his biggest challenge yet. With every crisis, there's an opportunity to profit. Paul Tudor Jones has become a master at spotting financial crises. By the summer of 2008, Jones saw that there was going to be a major crisis again, perhaps even bigger than a Black Monday crash. Like what he did during the previous crises, he started shorting index futures. But there's a problem. Of Lehman Brothers today, as the Wall Street giant stock went to zero. The collapse of the venerable New York bank follows a tumultuous few months of market volatility. And Being a long term client, Paul Tudor Jones had $100 million worth of assets at Lehman Brothers. When the bank went bust, he lost them all. But that was not the end of it. Jones was not able to liquidate his bond positions in the merging market because everyone was selling. But Jones' short positions came through, offsetting part of his losses. He ended 2008 with just 4% down. And this is the only negative year he has ever had. After that, he has become more conservative and his returns have become less outlandish. I mean, if you look at hedge fund indices over time, big funds underperform small funds. There's an inverse correlation with size and the, the returns you generate. At the same time, futures market has become more matured and information is much more easily accessible. When he first started out, commodity trading was relatively new and one can almost spot trends with naked eyes. In the old days, commodities or currencies had a tendency to trend. Not necessarily the very light trend you see here, but, but trending in, in, in periods. And if you decided, okay, I'm gonna to predict today by the average move in the past 20 days, I mean, there's 20 days, uh, maybe that would be a good prediction and I'd make some money. And in fact, uh, years ago, such a system uh, would work. Not beautifully, but it would work. So you'd make money, you'd lose money, you'd make money, but this is a year's worth of days. And you'd, you know, you'd, you'd, uh, you'd make a little money during that period. In order to maintain his performance, Paul Tudor Jones has been searching for a new edge ever since early 2000, and he found a solution. Technology has transformed the world that just 20 years ago even Jones couldn't imagine. While a great majority of hedge funds is struggling to make profits, there is a one group of funds that are making ungodly amount of money. Simon started a hedge fund over the course of 15 or 20 years. He's put together a track record that has literally beaten every other hedge fund manager's track record by a lot. He did this by building a quantitative investment management company with 75 PhDs in mathematics, physics, computer science, and so on. It became obvious to Paul Tudor Jones that the only way forward is to break down his trading principles and turn them into algorithms. This is what gold mining looks like in the modern world. All of the visible gold has been pretty much gone. What is left are the microscopic gold that are barely visible to the naked eye. You may be wondering, there must be less gold extracted per year. Wrong. Gold extraction has actually increased. Even when Jones first started out, he was able to spot large patterns that he could exploit. But those patterns have faded away. Just like modern day industrial gold mining, Quant strategy tend to make small profits consistently, which add up to huge returns in the long run. In 2002, Paul Tudor Jones co-founded Two Sigma, which later became a quant powerhouse. I've been watching Paul Tudor Jones since 2020. What's really impressive about this guy is that he has been making the right predictions all this time. He successfully predicted that a market will rebound after March last year. He also called it during October last year about the effect of Biden's tax plan. 